Hello and welcome to Alt D, where you'll see a short review of the German alternative media. Still catching up with the uh, current events at the moment. Uh, as I introduced Dr. Bodo Schiffman uh, yesterday, we can see in Germany a lot of uh, physicians and doctors and therapists are all speaking out. And I think this is having an effect on the politic. Bodo Schiffman actually introduced uh, the idea of the crown witness where he was saying that if you are a member of the government and you're the first person to come out and speak out against these measures, you're definitely going to have a positive effect on society. And we saw that then right after he introduced it with Herbert Kickel in the Austrian parliament, <coughs> giving Chancellor Kurtz a extreme tongue lashing. First of all, comparing the situation with Sweden and then uh, basically making him responsible for all of the panic and fear-mongering, the pictures of coffins in the media, uh, getting Austrians to spy and report on one another, like in the days of the East German Stasi. He accuses him of exploiting a primeval fear and telling the people that this is going to be the new reality, that everyone is going to have to fear for their lives 24-7 for the foreseeable future. He finds this baseless, he finds it exploitative, and uh, basically gets into how the mainstream media is working hand in hand with the Austrian government to actually perpetuate this situation. Anyone who criticizes government actions at this time are being presented as heretics and infidels, whereas Kurtz has set himself up on this media stage to be a savior of the Austrian people, and uh, telling them they have no alternative, but the time for no alternatives is over. And thanks to Sweden, and thanks to the official statistics in Central Europe, because often when the Austrians are reporting, they also include Switzerland and Germany into the figures in the German-speaking world. They know that, as I explained yesterday, the progression was already over when most of the measures were enacted. But the real measurable data that they have in Austria, he reports, is that 900,000 people are in temporary work situations, as Kurz are by. Uh, they have 100,000 people who are unemployed. And all of these people who are struggling to survive have no legal recourse for damages in Austria. That is the causal relationship of the political measures to what is actually happening on the ground. So, uh, he also says that experience makes us smarter and this is the reason why I can hardly believe anything you say anymore. Basically saying that the Chancellor of Austria has lost all credibility. He also compares it to Galileo's struggle to advocate the Copernican heliocentric solar system and how that took a long time and we don't have that much time with the economy shut down. He also refuses mandatory vaccines, quoting the Chancellor as saying there is no alternative until there's a vaccine. Uh, he is not going to be a part of this new normal and among the victims of Kurtz's new normal, those who didn't know how they're going to be able to continue their lives, well, the truth is also a victim of the new normal. Those of you that are familiar with Germany know that it's a very well organized country and it's usually held up as a lighthouse of environmental friendliness, cleanliness, and basically punctuality, everything you can want in a modern Western democracy. Uh, and today, as I promised yesterday, I'd like to introduce you to the real nonsense, regular feature from Extra Dry. Let's take a look at one of the older episodes. This should give you an idea of how the uh, transition to green energy in Germany is working out for small business owners and consumers now that Germany is in the top two in the world for uh, electricity costs. I've turned on the uh, English subtitles, so enjoy. Sundern im Sauerland. Hier ist das Elektrofachgeschäft von Clemens Becker-Justes. Mit Strom sparen. 
kennt er sich aus. Deswegen hat er seinen Laden umweltfreundlich aufgerüstet. Für 12.000 Euro. Stromfresserlampen raus, neue stromsparende Lampen rein. Und tatsächlich, Stromverbrauch ist gesunken, Stromkosten äh, gestiegen. Also ich habe gedacht, ich bin im falschen Film. Ich habe investiert und äh, habe viel Geld in die Hand genommen und dann kommt sowas dabei raus. 1400 Euro mehr bezahlen, als äh, wenn ich die alten Lampen drin gelassen hätte. Tja, nur weil man Strom spart, heißt das ja nicht, dass man Geld spart. Der Mann vom örtlichen Energieunternehmen erklärt das mal. Früher, als der Bäcker Justus mehr Strom verbraucht hat und mehr Leistung in Anspruch genommen hatte, kam er in den Genuss einer ermäßigten Konzessionsabgabe und das ist jetzt leider nicht mehr möglich. Durch die Konzessionsabgabenverordnung bekommen Großverbraucher einen schönen Rabatt auf ihre Stromrechnung. Aber leider ist Herr Bäcker Joostes jetzt viel zu umweltfreundlich geworden. Dafür gibt es natürlich keine Rabatte. Was nun? Ja, die Konsequenz ist, dass er entweder tatsächlich die höhere Konzessionsabgabe zahlt oder äh, seinen Verbrauch wieder künstlich in die Höhe treibt, um dann in den Genuss der ermäßigten Konzessionsabgabe zu kommen. Also ich äh, kann, kann den Schwachsinn immer noch nicht begreifen. Äh, ich äh, spare CO2 ein, ich spare äh, Energie ein und muss jetzt genau das Gegenteil bewirken, indem ich die Geräte einschalte, um über einen bestimmten Wert zu kommen. So etwas habe ich in meinem Leben noch nicht gehabt. Aber so senkt man eben Stromkosten. Alle verfügbaren Staubsauger auf volle Pulle. <lacht> Das macht Herr Bäcker Joostes jetzt regelmäßig. Na bitte, Energieverbrauch steigt wieder und Stromrechnung sinkt. Das leuchtet doch ein. So, as we can see, a direct hit for green energy and Germany's contradictory bureaucratic system. And so we'll be enjoying more of those as we go on. Thank you for checking things out. And tomorrow I'd like to get into Ken Yebsen and Ken FM. See you then.